So we're going to go take some new calls. We're going to have Emmanuel, uh, Theist, he, him in Texas. There should, there should be a law against blasphemy due to its psychological harms. Um, okay, well. That's a claim. Yeah, let's uh, let's see how you justify that. How you doing, Emmanuel? How you doing? I'm good. I'm foggy today, but I'm doing good. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> there was a Jamie Boone and Eric Murphy video on. I think they were on Talk Heathen, and I did this experiment where I actually showed a video for you know a bunch of like believers and stuff. And I saw their, uh, like the panic and angry and rage on their face. Um, and also video where they tear apart the scriptures and stuff. Uh, I was such in a panic that my conclusion is that, uh, there should be, uh, like a restriction on, on freedom of speech or freedom of expression. I think it should be like restricted, but, uh, well, but I trip. also want to point out, though, that there should be separation of religion and government, though. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not advocating for a position that those two should not be separate. Well, so first of all, uh, freedom of speech is restricted. You cannot go into a theater and yell fire. Um, and there are some other similar restrictions like that. As for your so-called experiment, um, there's a couple of things that I have. One, um, what do you have any any skill at all setting up uh, setting up such experiments in such a way to account for all external variables? And two, uh, you didn't mention a control group. So where was your control group? For instance, did you show the same video to atheists? Um, and did you show uh, that same video to people who are on the weaker side of Christianity, or did you just show it to evangelicals? No, I, um, there's lots no, of really. I only showed to de devout uh, Bible believing Christians. Well, so uh, that doesn't uh, help me at friends. all, right? Because when I was a Catholic, I would say I was devout, and yet um, any of these arguments wouldn't have pissed me off when I was a, a Catholic. Um, I am sure there are other Christian, uh, former Christians in that same boat. Um, and you know, I have mentioned earlier the there's a church there in Austin that doesn't uh, that the pastor doesn't believe anymore, and yet they still call themselves Christians. So you've got this whole range of stuff. Um, some of them would call themselves devout, some wouldn't. So that doesn't help me determine what type of people they are when you say they're devout. Christians who believe that uh, the Bible literally are considered devout, and people who don't believe the Bible literally could all would all also consider themselves devout. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't help. So give me some help here and how you actually selected for your your audience. These are people who I actually know deeply in a sense that when I was in California, these are people who uh, actually are a staff member of the Pentecostal churches. Uh, some of them are former, uh, okay, former so it wasn't a random uh, member of the Ethiopian church, uh, Mennonites. So and it wasn't so, a random selection, uh, is what you're saying. It, it wasn't a random selection. It was a group of people that you know. Yeah, like this are so people. There's bias built into you, there's people. bias built into your study, is basically what I'm hearing, and therefore, who cares? Now, do you have you done an actual study, or have you do you know how to do the statistics, and do you know how to actually conduct this type of study in no, such a way that it actually did, has meaning? Uh, uh, no, I'm actually doing a deduction argument where if a certain amount of people are actually offended to hear well, see, the someone problem, my problem actually, is I'm, yes, and I'm attacking I'm attacking that right by pointing out that your so-called survey is garbage because you didn't randomize the selection across the population, you didn't uh, try to account for any other variables, and you had no control group. So where in the world, why in the world should I accept anything you've done as valid? Because yeah. it sounds like a garbage study to me. It's not gonna it's not gonna be a coincidence that you hit all of the, yeah. the markers that you need for, for a good study, right? Yeah, I, I would but love for, for Shannon Q to be on this call because uh she actually knows how to do these things and can rip you apart much better. Um, and actually rip you apart with math. So, 
Yeah, man, do you want to respond to that? Because yeah. I have a different kind of take, I guess, in a sense. Yeah, uh, but like, and also, what is the purpose of a commi- uh, like committing blasphemy if it's not for offending someone who actually believes this thing? Even when you see it like from, uh, you know, a well-being perspective, there is nothing that is that comes like there is no a good outcome that comes out of like this sort of so, act. Like the the yeah, you you change the topic, and then let me just respond real quick to that change in topic, and then let J Mike uh, tear yeah, you a little bit. Yeah, that because that's the that's the topic that I yeah I was going to respond yeah. to. So yeah, let's, let's is, stay here. Oh, real okay. Quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead then. Tara. No 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 no, Jim. I'm no. I'm saying no no. Like stick. We'll stick here. Then we can move transition into that. So yeah, give your response definitely. Yeah. So when I say I don't accept it, that it, I do do not believe in God, I've committed blasphemy. Stating my position has committed blasphemy. Um, and I don't see how that harms anybody. Um, and it correctly, uh, establishes my position. So there you go. But let me tell you what, what, what bad thing you have done when you are committing those things. If, if you and I were related and you committed blasphemy, now you put me in a position where I have to fear for your life, whether or not this deity is too actually ba- too, doing too bad, to too it. bad, too too fucking bad that you have some crazy <laughs> set of beliefs. From my view, right, like some and not calling you crazy or anything like that, but the the propositions that that you believe in to me are just so out of this world. That okay, it, it's really strange to think that oh, if somebody has these set of statements that they believe are true, and I like you know, somehow um, say something like, you know, I don't believe in that. Or I say something that's black, like I deny the Holy Spirit. Like, I think that's like the one thing that you can't repent for or whatever. Uh, If I say something like that and that affects you where you're now fearful of my life, that's not my problem that you have an irrational fear, right? Like, that's not my problem. Like if it it was that like, oh, you think that like this clown is going to come like sneak, take me and take me out of my bed and put me in the circus or something like that. Like, it, I, I'm sorry that you have this outcome that I think is ridiculous, right? It's like not my problem that I have that that's what you believe. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should actually get like develop good epistemology and you won't have these ridiculous outcomes of like, oh no, if person X doesn't believe this, then I think they're going to go to this place. And that, that affects me. How dare them not be convinced? So it affects me. Like, this is ridiculous, man. Come on. Yeah. And your position also leads you into some very, very dangerous, immoral territory. Um, this is the position that uh, a number of so-called uh, uh, gay conversion therapies use to justify torturing human beings, period, end of conversation. Um, and that is immoral. So your fear for other people's lives, is, it can be used to justify horrible things happening to people. Uh in order to quote unquote, save them. Your fear is not my problem. Your fear is your problem, period. So that there's just, there's just no way that that, that's anywhere my problem. When I say the Holy Spirit doesn't exist and you're the God of the Bible is an asshole. There's, there's, there's nothing. Your reaction is not my problem. Uh, Okay. But like, yeah. what? What it? Okay, I'm sorry. No, you can go ahead. I was just gonna say, fl- fl- just flip it around. I mean, just imagine, imagine I said the opposite, right? That oh, because you believe in Christianity or something, it it affects me that you have this belief. Like that's not what any of us are doing. We we care about the how those beliefs inform. Like if those beliefs that you had didn't like affect I my gay friends or my trans friends that. hold on hold on real quick if they did if they didn't inform those actions such that they affect my you know uh, my atheist friends uh, agnostic friends that have been um you know they don't have a community or a family anymore because of coming out or being gay or trans if i had just like if i had if there were none of that had occurred right those beliefs don't actually informing uh these actions that people take, then I don't think any of us would be really that concerned. Like we aren't concerned about other beliefs that don't inform other people's actions. I'm not really worried about my pagan friends and and what they believe. They're very quick to go. I can't justify this. I just believe it. 
uh, right? And they don't have any beliefs that they inform actions. In fact, they're on the front lines with me usually. So it's it's just not even analogous in one sense that, yeah, I care about what you believe if and only if it affects other people because the belief goes out and imposes on other people, right? The fact that you believe it isn't the problem to me. It's like, I don't, you can, that, okay, you can believe whatever you want in that sense. But once it starts coming over and your fist hits my face, right? We got a problem. And me not believing in the Holy Spirit does none of that for you. I'm not hurting you in any way. It, it's, it's offensive, honestly, to think that my not believing or something like you could use that against me. Like you could use my own mental states on what I believe against, like as if I should be ashamed for them. Okay. We'll provide the fucking argument that, you know, Jesus rose and maybe I'll believe it. It's not my problem that that project has failed. Uh, I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you shouldn't have the freedom or, or, or the right. Like I totally sub support you. You having your like um, atheistic position or agnostic position, if you have one. So I do will, uh, I do agree that there shouldn't be like, you know, a law that, that does not permit you, like that we have in some countries that you can't actually be agnostic or skeptic. But it says uh, that you do, I, hold, I, on, I, let, let, yeah, hold on, let's be clear. Let's just be clear then, because it says that you do want there to be laws against blasphemy. So do you, do you, do you want no, there to be- Blasphemy, Okay. Okay. Blasphemy, uh, like insulting God and being an atheist are two different things. Okay. Well, let, so let me ask uh, you this, right? Because uh, this is, this is, this is where my concern is uh, in academic, like the academic field. If I was to take what Schweitzer, um, a scholar, New Testament scholar, like the early 1900s changed the landscape of how we look at the historical Jesus, right? As a failed apocalyptic preacher, that's become like the mainstay for scholars that believe that Jesus existed. Now, is that blasphemy the position that Jesus was a failed apocalyptic preacher? Because if it is, and there's a law, no. then we couldn't have we couldn't have any good like academic work or scholarship on anything. We would just have to like accept what the book says without any independent criteria. So it seems like weird because at, at what point do you demarcate what's blasphemy and what's just doing good scholarship? My answer is no, because if you say that there is no God, there is no Christ. I don't consider that as a uh, you know harmful blasphemy. What I, what I would consider a harmful blasphemy is like, for example, I saw I was scrolling. You know, I'm actually a social media hobbyist. So on Facebook, I saw that it said, okay, it said on the title, uh, you know, Jesus fucking Christ. And there's two dudes. There is one dude who is like bending over, and there's another dude. Who, they both look like you know, um, like Jesus from the movies, I would consider that a harmful blasphemy. If you come to, to me and say that there is no God, or if you announce on public that there is no deity, I don't really care. You should have, you have every right to say that, but you you should not be like, it's like a parental advisory that we have on some like music videos or uh, like we restrict how, how does, a certain how does that expression. Mean, how does that mean harm you? How does that meme harm you? What harm does that meme give do to you? Because the the intention uh, is not predicated upon like the social welding, right? There's not there's not a good outcome so that what? comes out of uh, that kind it's of so right? it's so yeah, this is so weird. It's like I look, I think I have a different opinion than you on like all this. If someone was like, say I was like really patriotic and someone's burning a flag, or I really like science, someone's burning a book in front of me, I'm gonna look at them and just laugh and go, You're a you're a fucking dumbass. I'm gonna yeah, laugh and exactly. walk away. <laughs> like you're an idiot. Like yeah. it's not gonna I'm not gonna be offended like because someone takes David Hume's you know, book, and I really like David Hume or Graham Oppie's book. And it's just like, oh, I'm going to burn the best arguments uh, against God's. Here you go, Mike. I love that book. Okay. I'm just going to look at it and go, wow, you're an idiot. I'm not going to be offended by that. Like, if you're offended, like, if you think it's true, you shouldn't be offended by that. Like, you should just, you should literally just go, wow, I, I fear for them. Like, that sucks. Yeah. Maybe I can give my argument on why I think Jesus existed that they would come to it, right? That's the kind of the task that you're left with it's now is if you really care and you want, look, here's a really good way to end all the blasphemy. Give an argument or give reasons or justification on why God exists and convince people. And then you don't have to worry about that. But right. it seems strange to have that law uh, in any case, like, and even in the smallest sense possible. Yeah, it, it's just really stupid. I mean, to take an artistic expression and call that blasphemy. Um, 
that again just leads to restrictions on freedom of speech um i mean we need to be very very careful about how we restrict speech um and restricting that kind of thing this is no different than uh you know the Isl islamic world going or some of the islamic world going nuts um the over drawings. the guy yeah the drawings mm -hmm. in uh the, the french magazine whose name i forget yep. now yep yep um that was just absolutely ridiculous. There's no reason for it. If I say your God is a narcissistic asshole, uh, I don't, th that causes no harm. Um, I think it's a pretty accurate description based on my understanding of the, the, uh, uh, indications for narcissism that are published on pop size sites. Um, but again, that, that has neither here nor there for, to try and restrict because you don't like something um as a christian i found a lot of the uh jesus christ zombie memes mm -hmm. hysterical um and so i wouldn't restrict that but here you are trying to restrict freedom mm -hmm. of speech trying to restrict mm -hmm. artists and what they can portray um you're just no, another totalitarian nut job uh trying to impose a belief that he can't support on the rest of us and no i'm not going to accept that ever um and again uh, your original premise that there's actual psychological harm. Uh, you haven't even come close to doing a good study. Um, you and good studies aren't even in the same universe. So uh, go do a good one and see what you come up with, or better yet, go find someone who's actually done it. So uh, Charlie Hebdo is the name of the publication. Uh, thank you, Armin. Uh, Manuel, uh, if you want to respond, we're going to move. Uh, we're try I want to try to fit one more call in. We're getting yeah. to the end of the time. Okay, um, no worries. But, thank you, guys. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I don't have time anyway. Okay. okay no worries. Yeah, call, just call back. We'll talk about it.